Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first show of Heal Thyself. I'm Dr. Christian Gonzalez. Thank you for being here, for listening, for watching. This is going to be some good stuff. So you may know me from Instagram at Dr. G, where I'm really posting some information about physical health, mental health, emotional health, whatever it may be to empower the audience, right? This is the goal of this podcast is for knowledge, 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 knowledge. I want you as a listener or as a viewer to be learning every single show from not only me, but guests that come on or any really cool knowledge bombs that are dropped, whatever you're going to take home with you is really, really important. So the whole point of this show is to drop the knowledge and then for you as a viewer listener and being empowered, empowered enough to be like, well, shit, that was, that, was a really, that was a really good line. I didn't know about that. No one ever taught me that. And then taking that information and advocating for your own health, which is so important, right? Because we need to be advocates for our own health because there's so much out there, so much information out there, left and right being disseminated towards us. And we go, what the heck is true? But here, we're going to give you some good stuff. We're going to give you some good facts. So need to be an advocate for your own health. We have physical health we're going to be talking about, mental health emotional health, right? We're not just a physical body as conventional medicine may approach our healthcare, but there's so much more to it. We are emotional, mental, spiritual, so really elevating all sides of health. And this brings me to my next point, right? This is called heal thyself, not healthy self, right? When we were thinking about the name, we're like, well, where do we go with this? We can go healthy self, which is really, that's a good name. Healthy self might be cool, but healthy self is sort of ambiguous. Like what the heck is healthy, right? Because we have so many views of what health is and it's so subjective, but heal thyself, well, sort of puts responsibility on you, right? Uh, and with that responsibility, it's you who's taking that information and empowering yourself and advocating for your own health, as I mentioned. So here at this podcast, we're just leading you to water. We're putting you right there and it's up to you to jump in, right? And that's really empowering because you're going to be able to take that home. So it's not going to be your same old medical podcast. I mean, I've listened to more than a few podcasts and I'm sitting there and I'm like, this stuff is, um, it's boring. You know, it, it, it is, it's, it's cool stuff, but it's presented in such a black and white lecture, boring way. It's not relatable. And that is the antithesis of what we're doing here. We are dropping knowledge in the most relatable way, in the most take home way. So um, it's going to be really cool. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. So uh, as far as the show, we're just going to be having segments where I'm dropping knowledge bombs. I'm telling you about things that maybe no one ever told you. And it's going to be a really, really awesome segment. Um, every show will have that. And then because of demand and what we see on uh, Instagram of really people responding well and holding traction, we're going to do product reviews and we're going to go into, hey, look, this product is shit. And this is why I would not take it, eat it, even have it in my cabinet. And then what a really good substitute could be because you all have to be empowered consumers, right? You're going to the grocery store. I want you to know how to shop. I want you to know where to go. Uh, empowerment as far as just knowledge about what we don't know. So, uh, yeah, welcome. This is going to be some good stuff and I'm really excited. All right. Our first segment is the knowledge bomb segment. We're going to be talking about some good stuff, something that has been personal to me. All right. And it's amalgam fillings. What the heck is an amalgam filling? Well, it's those metal fillings. You know, when you're going to the dentist and you have a cavity, hopefully you never did, but if you did uh, and you're an 80s baby like me, you you were probably given an amalgam filling and that's that metal filling in your mouth that um, isn't really aesthetically nice, but it's pretty strong. Oh God, these are the worst. And I'll tell you why. So uh, I myself had eight of them because uh, when I was a kid, I loved sugar, candy, cakes, pizza, everything that is destructive to our teeth. It was my addiction, right? And you know, my parents didn't really know about nutrition, so why not? And then me being stubborn, I never wanted to brush my teeth. So um, of course, I, I, I had eight overall, and uh, it took me a while to get them out, but they're nasty. They're, they're just, they're, they're destructive to our health, and I wanna talk about why. Well, 
They're known neurotoxins. We know that mercury is the main component in these guys that are hanging out in your mouth. And it's a neurotoxin. What that means is it targets your nerves, it targets your brain. It gives you these, what they call cognitive changes, right? Brain fog, memory loss. But another nasty thing that it does is this. It affects your detox pathways, right? And we, we all need these detox pathways to be running smoothly like a well-oiled machine, right? Your liver's like, oh, look at this toxin. We have this detox pathway. Oh, how about this one? Here's another detox pathway. It depletes all of those nutrients in the detox pathway, right? So what happens is this. Say we have a cup of coffee or tea and you know we drink it. These amalgam vapors, they're filling, it vaporizes. And what we're doing is we're breathing in those chemicals, that, that metal, right? And years ago, years ago, years ago, uh, they believed by they, meaning the, the industry, the, the dental uh, field, believe that this stuff doesn't vaporize and it just stays in our body and it's, it's, it's solid. It, nothing, it won't leach or anything, but that's, that's not true at all. Uh, it does vaporize and we know that. So, um, that's concerning, right? Because if you have these fillings, at least one, you know, you're always going to be drinking water. It doesn't matter if it's cold or hot. You're going to be eating and it's going to be mobilized all throughout the body in your tissues, right? And it starts building up. So first it's in the blood, hanging out, moving around. And then it just goes, oh, let me, let me, let me just make a home in your hair. And then we could see it in hair test, mercury, the levels. And then it's like, all right, I'm out, of, I'm out of this hair. Let's go to the bones. Let's go to the brain. Let's go to the liver. Let's go to the kidney, right? And this is where we start having organ toxicity. It's nasty. It's nasty because this has palpable changes to our health, right? And you might ask at this point, well, why the hell are still people using it, right? These dentists, I'm going, I'm have a cavity and, you know, some people are still filling it with amalgams. Well, it's based on all of this really poor method data that the dental industry uses, right? And they go, it's safe. And here's why, because when you pee, only 8% is coming out. It's not that much, right? You're not getting a lot of uh, mercury coming out. The problem is this, mercury is not necessarily a really good measure in the urine. We want to see it more in the tissue, right? Because I remember I just mentioned, it just flows from your blood to then your tissues, right? A little bit comes out in the urine, actually 8%, not that much. So, um, but we can't do that, right? We can only measure that when you die, right? We check your brain, your uh, kidneys, and then we see that, right? And what happens is this, this is, this is crazy. This is what I tell people. When they measured these uh, people post-mortem, right? When they die, they saw that uh, the brain and the kidneys had at least two times, all the way up to 12 times more mercury than the average person who never had fillings, which is, really concerning. To me, even equally or more concerning is that women in human and animals, like the, um, the mercury will transfer from the mom right through the placenta into the baby. And we know that this can cause developmental changes in the baby's brain. We know that it can cause cognitive, behavioral, or spectrum disorders in the baby. Like do you see now why I'm ranting about this? Because uh, not only is it affecting the person who has the filling, but it's going into the children, right? And can potentially cause some damage. So amalgam fillings are not good. We cannot be having them. Let me make this point. This is a very important point. If we have an amalgam filling, you cannot have Joe Blow, the dentist, take out that filling without having training, right? And this is really important because if they're not trained to take out these fillings and they just drill them out, well, then you're vaporizing mercury, then you're mobilizing it and you're swallowing pieces of mercury. And this is setting you up for long-term issues or even short-term, right? Because I've seen it in myself. People have had something called autoimmune disease right after because your immune system is reacting to this toxin. You have to have a biological or holistic dentist who's trained to remove it. And when I did my, when I did my removal, the, uh, the dentist had a whole setup, but to ensure that any vaporized mercury is not going in my body or their body, or I'm not swallowing any, right? So 
uh, very quick. The database is IAOMT. That database, uh, you can go on and you can find the nearest biological dentist. But if you have amalgam fillings, know that it's going to be expensive to remove, but know that this is so important to your health. It shouldn't be in your mouth at all, not one. So that was today's knowledge bomb. Next segment, let's talk about one of my favorite uh, Instagram stories I've ever done. And it was when I was walking around Whole Foods and um, going up the up and down the aisles. And I see so many uh, snack bars, protein bars, and I'm like, oh, there's so many, so many choices. If I was, if I had no knowledge about anything and I came here, what would draw me in? And really the ones that drew me in tended to be the ones that were the most shitty. So I decided, you know what, let me talk about my three worst protein bars or snack bars out there. And then my three favorite. Yeah. So I've compiled a list or, or a nice rundown about why, but before I even go into it, I want to talk about what is the difference between organic and conventional, right? Because a lot of these bars say clean, natural, and then other bars have the organic label. As a consumer, we need to be looking for the organic label, right? We, we want to see the USDA organic. It's not a perfect label, but what it does do is ensure us that there are no synthetic pesticides in there. The problem is this, pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, they cause issues to our body, period, right? Uh, one little exposure to pesticide, you'll be fine, right? We have all, all of these detox mechanisms in our body to take care of it, beautiful. But cumulative, think about the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat and other exposures, then that cumulative exposure starts taking a real big toll. This is why I always preach the difference between having clean food and not clean food, right? And we're not talking about macronutrients. We're not talking about, all right, you know, this has low sugar and high protein and wonderful, I can eat it. I'm talking about deeper than that quality, right? So what we know is pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, they cause hormonal disruptions, which are the worst, they cause genetic changes, which can lead to cancer, which is really bad, right? And then we have cognitive changes, neurotoxicity, developmental changes, uh, reproductive issues, trying to have a baby. This is things that we have to really think about and become more empowered to change, right? That brings me to my next point. Greenwashing. Do we know what the heck greenwashing is? Because... When I was younger, I had no idea what it was. And I fell for greenwashing every single day. I was going to the supermarket. I go, oh, it says natural. It says clean. I mean, how much better is that? It can't get better than that, right? But these companies are capitalizing on greenwashing, the concept of greenwashing, by telling us that this is the cleanest product without any real certifications or labels. And then we're falling for it going, oh, yeah, it's clean. Let me go for it, all right? So with that said, let's talk about the first one. I, I would say even before I pull it out, this is the king of greenwashing, even though it's number three, worst bar. RX bar, RX bar, right? Uh, this is so good at greenwashing because look, we have three eggs, six almonds, four cashews, two dates, look, and even no BS right? Which is, I mean, that's the best part of it, right? No BS. I mean, I know. And then if you go on the website, they're marketing how clean their products are, right? It's whole. They're using just ingredients that are whole. And I, if, if I was a consumer who had no idea, I'd be like, well, God damn, RX bars, this is a really good bar, right? <laughs> the problem is, is that they're so deceptive about their ingredients, right? If you go to the website, you'll see the eggs, admittedly are conventional, right? And they say these, they want to give these chickens the best life uh, and the best food, right? And it says they eat a balanced diet. Well, what the hell's a balanced diet? List out for me what these chickens are eating, right? Because to me, a balanced diet is something really clean, devoid of GMOs. And they say there's no GMOs. Okay, great. But what other, what other inflammatory foods might these chickens be eating, right? Uh, so there's no assurance about where these eggs are coming from. On top of that, they're being sued. As of last summer, um, 
because there's deceptive marketing. It's not necessarily egg whites that are used, it's egg white powder, which is a little more processed. And if they put egg white powder on the package, you know, what mom's gonna wanna buy this for their kid? They're eating, they're eating egg white protein powder. And on top of that, it's reported that their fruits are being infused with concentrates, right? Uh, to sweeten it up. Okay, well, that's a problem because we don't know their sourcing. We, there's no USDA organic label. And this is one of the, this is the mixed berry one, right? It has strawberries, it has cranberries, it has raspberries. Um, and basically what it, what it boils down to is this. These fruits are highly sprayed, right? We know that berries are some of the most highly sprayed with pesticides uh, fruits out there. Say, for example, strawberry. There's 72 potential toxins that it can be hit with. Out of that, we know that 64 can cause all of those diseases or disruptions that I mentioned. So, Rx Bar, I don't know what you're doing, but um, you need to really start rebranding and remarketing with a more natural approach, right? It's a more clean approach because they talk nothing about their berries. They talk nothing about pesticides on their website at all. Not coincidentally, right? This is deceptive. I don't like it and I don't approve of it. And then on top of that, there are nuts, we know, almonds, cashews, just like berries are highly sprayed foods. Uh, and that's concerning. It really is. Because now when you look at this for what it is, we have six almonds highly sprayed, four cashews sprayed, and then a bunch of fruits, which we don't know how much, but we have raspberries, cranberries, strawberries, highly sprayed. So if I had my own lab in my basement, I wish I could do some toxin testing on this, but I'd stay away from RX bar as a whole. Okay. That was my rant on RX Bar. I have a personal personal vendetta because of their clean marketing. It's just, they just, no BS. To me, it's all BS. Number two, I talk about this one because it's in over 150,000 stores. Kind Bar, I know you've seen this one, all right? You go to the gas station when you're on the road and it's in the gas station. You go to the convenience store, you go to the supermarket, Kind Bar has become, um, become one of the major bars out there. Right, and here's my favorite part when you go on the website, right? Because it has, it says, look, gluten-free ingredients you can pronounce, just like the RX bar, right? No BS, ingredients you can pronounce. No genetically modified ingredients. Thank you, RX bar, I mean, kind bar. But there's no certifications that tell me that any of this is true, right? Nothing. On top of that, you go to the website and here's the craziest part. They said, no, we are not pursuing organic certification because their top priority is in investing in high quality premium ingredients. That's, that's ridiculous, right? So you're telling me you can't show the public, us as people, that this is, this is insured certified to tell us that, you know what, there's no synthetic pesticides in here, but we're going to take the word of Kind Bar that, you know, we're just going to make sure we get high quality ingredients. Well, you know, I'm gonna make sure to get a Tesla one day, but who's gonna believe that, you know, until I get it. So I'm not believing shit until I see that, until I see that label. All right, that's the first part. On top of that, just like RX bar, we have nuts, we have fruits um, in here that uh, are not certified organic. And according to them, they're, they're sourcing it as best as they can. But really the problem is, like I said, there's no assurance in this. So we're eating this on our own accord with the risk. All right. On top of that, it has natural flavors. What the hell is natural flavors? I know we want to talk about this because, you know, you, you look at, it doesn't even have to be this. You look at different foods aside from water and I believe maybe sugar. Now, natural flavors is something that we see everywhere. All right. So natural flavors is so ambiguous. The FDA goes, hey, to the, to the manufacturers. Here's a really ambiguous definition of what natural flavors are, and then you can you can uh, just put them in there and it's fine. Basically, what it, it could be from fruits to vegetables to bark to beef, it doesn't matter. It's just an extract of the essence of that flavor, right? But it's coming from different sources. So um, this has natural flavors. What the hell does that mean? On top of that, if not to complicate it more, the FDA goes, here, 
on top of natural flavors that can that can be derived from 3,000 different chemicals. So we don't know where these natural flavors are derived. There's no fruits that are certified organic, no nuts or seeds that are certified organic. So um, again, greenwashing at its best. No labels, no anything. Second worst. All right, drum roll number one. Uh, the That's It Bar, look. That's it, Bar. Another really good, this, they're also being sued by the same group uh, that RX Bar is suing, but, uh, or that, that is suing RX Bar. That's it. It looks so clean, right? We have, shit, one apple and 20 blueberries. If I'm a, an uninformed consumer and I'm walking and I see one apple and 20 blueberries, that is clean as it gets, right? Nothing else, just that. It's also non-GMO, right? Can someone tell me what apples or blueberries are GMO in the first place? If you're seeing a non-GMO label or description or claim on a food that's not even GMO, we know that that's already a greenwashing tactic. On top of that, you can't pay me to eat a conventional apple or 20 conventional blueberries, and here's why. We know that apples and blueberries are some of the most highly sprayed foods, right? Apple can have potentially 109 pesticides in it, 109. Out of those 109, 91 could be super toxic. So same thing with blueberries, it's up there. It's like 40 pesticides or so, and then 38 toxic. So what we have here is one whole apple and 20 blueberries in one bar, right? It's got, it's got a non-GMO label though, so that's, that must be great. But, um, you know, that's it bar reached out to me after I called them out and they said, Hey, you know, sorry, you're not, we're not happy or you're not happy with our bar, but, uh, we're really trying to be organic. So they say they're, they're, they're going with like 60 to 80% organic. I said, all right, well, you know, show me a label until I know that on here, I'm going to take your word for it. Right. And I have trust issues. I really do with foods and bars. So if I'm not, if I'm not seeing standardization, then I'm not really going anywhere with it. So yeah, that's what I feel about uh, That's It Bar. Those are my three worst to reiterate. RX Bar, um, no BS, a lot of BS. Kind Bar, um, unkind food. And that's it. Um, yeah, that should be it. I don't like it. All right. That's, that's my segment on the worst bars. We're, now let's go to the cleanest and uh, my favorite bars. Okay. So at the same place, on the same aisle, on the same shelf, pretty much, you can find these really shitty, toxic, greenwash bars. You can find some really good bars. Okay. So how do we go about this? Let's start with my favorite, my third favorite. It's the square bar. The square bar looks like this. And I know you've seen it. Square bar. It's small, good amount of protein for, for this little small guy. Uh, a little bit more sugar than I like, but really important, if you look on the bar, you will see USDA organic label. Thank you, Square Bar, for getting the certification because now I know that no synthetic pesticides are used in any of the ingredients. So even if you put fruits or nuts or seeds, I'm not worried about if it's toxic. I'm not worried about if it's pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, insecticides, right? That's really cool, thank you. Square, non-GMO, it has a label. So anything like soy, canola, uh, any vegetable oils, uh, corn is not gonna be GMO, even better. And it's gluten-free for all my gluten-free friends out there. But I will say, just, um, just to be sure, we have um, another label, gluten-free. Uh, but my whole point about this is this. This is not greenwashing, although it's very clean labeling. Uh, we also know that it has these labels and that's important as a consumer. This is what we wanna look out for. We wanna be like, all right, cool, USDA organic. So now that I know that it covers everything, it's clean. And then it's not GMO, which is really cool too. Uh, it's a good bar too. If you like chocolate, it's got coconut in it, it's delicious, I have it as a snack. Number three. All right, number two is one of my favorites overall. 
And um, it, it could have been number one, because Go Macro does an awesome, awesome, awesome job of making sure that they're clean, right? So it has the USDA organic label. Remember, first and foremost, that's what we want to see, USDA organic. It has a USDA organic label. Non-GMO, has a non-GMO certification. So we know that it, does, it's not, it doesn't have glyphosate or any corn, soy, or canola, or any other vegetable oils that are GMO. That's a good thing. But then it goes further to have this, um, to have this certification called Certified Clean. And clean is really cool, and here's why. Because we know that it's sourced, right? C is conscious. We know that it's sourced consciously, so and ethically, right? Which goes even further, right? Um, we know that it's it's ethical, which is the I'm, I'm sorry. We know that it's live, so it's C L live. L is live, and we know that that means that it has enzymes in there. It's bioavailable, meaning that it's not only just good food, but we know that it's nourishing to us, right? We know that it's going to be broken down by our body and absorbed, right? And then we have the E, which is ethical. It's non-GMO, it's humane, right? Active, again, enzymes, bioavailability, and then nourishing. So that follows an ANDI score. ANDI score is a, basically a, a, how many micronutrients are in there. So without getting super technical, all we know is we're going to know from the clean label is that, look, it's a clean bioavailable to our body and high micronutrient food. And then it has a raw label, which means that it's non-GMO, it's alive, again, bioavailable, and it's minimally processed. This would be number one if it didn't use so much brown rice, right? Now, I'll say a little aside about brown rice, right? Uh, we see it as a health food, and a f maybe once a week, it could be a health, health food. But the concern with brown rice is this, arsenic, right? Little Brown rice uh, will suck up arsenic from the ground, right? And, and what happens is this long-term, this metal, could be very toxic to us. So when I spoke to Go Macro, they said uh, the concentrate, uh, the, the, the brown rice concentrated trait that they use is cleaned with minimal arsenic. But they also use brown rice, rice, brown rice puffs, brown rice crisps, and that's, that's a little bit more than I'd like. So to be honest, this is one of my favorite, but I wouldn't have it every day, just, just to let you know. Um, but Go Macro is doing it right, and more companies need to do it right. It's, it's got all the labeling, uh, and for me to feel really encouraged and feel really good about it. So go macro, uh, I got a lot of love for you. All right, number one favorite protein bar. All right, and it's my favorite because it's USDA organic, okay? We talked about that. Um, it's it's non-GMO, so we talked about that, how clean it is. And it's got a good level of protein and fiber, right? So before I even show or reveal number one, we wanna do this always. We take the total carbohydrates and divide it by the total amount of sugar. And we want, to know, we want that number to be five or under. Then we know it's got a good ratio for us to eat, right? Um, it won't be affecting our insulin like, let's say, a That's It bar, which has a ton of sugar and a little bit of fiber. So Garden of Life, Sport Bar. This is one of the cleanest ones. Every ingredient in this is organic and it's pretty tasty. I, I, I don't eat the peanut butter one, but I have this one. I eat the brownie one, which is more tasty to me. But like Go Macro Bar, it doesn't have all of the certifications like the clean and raw certification, but it's a good bar. And um, it tastes good when I used to eat it. And, uh, and I'll talk about that, but it's got a lot of protein. So if you're active and you want a good bar, it's a good quality one, and it's got good macronutrients, good micronutrients, all organic. So they did a good job on this bar. I will say something. Garden of Life is owned by Nestle. So uh, if you know about Nestle, it's a really crappy company, and it, it commits many atrocities. We don't like Nestle as a whole. So Ingredients-wise, this is awesome. Morally, I leave you as an informed consumer to make your decision if you want to support a company owned by Nestle, which is why um, I personally don't eat it, but it's a good bar. And that's what I'm talking about. We're talking about ingredients. But remember, I, I want you to all be informed consumers, making your own decision. Um, 
So I'm going to give you all of the sides, good and bad. That was a really fun segment because um, I can talk about bars all day. You may ask, if you don't know me yet, who the heck is this guy talking about this, right? What do I know? What, it, what, what, what am I all about, right? I'm a passionate doctor. I talk about things that flow through me with fire, right? And it's because I do think that we, as people, need to be more uh, informed and empowered. And that's, that's the whole point of this is empowering people, as I mentioned. So uh, with that said, uh, just to maybe know a little bit about who this guy is on this side, uh, I am a naturopathic doctor. That is, uh, we go through schooling, four years of medical school. I did my residency in oncology for two years in Philadelphia. I saw a lot of sick people. I saw a lot of shitty dietary recommendations. Um, I was kind of appalled about the way we approach just health in general, and, and that's really concerning. So as I went through this whole process of schooling and residency, I said to myself, oh man, this, some, we need to know. We need to know more, right? Because informed consent has been something that just went by the wayside, right? When I was, shoot, the last time I went to uh, a conventional doctor, and I, I, love, I love conventional doctors because they perform miracles, but the last time I went for a strep throat was 10 years ago maybe, and I didn't even get, I didn't even get a physical exam. They didn't even look into my throat. The doctor just assumed that I had strep throat based on a five minute intake. And this is, this is sort of what we're seeing in medicine. I mean, on average, what is it, five to 12 minutes that a doctor will see you, 12 at the most? It's crazy. So this is sort of the paradigm that we're living in in medicine. And, and it's, it's, it's totally percolating towards everything else, the food industry, like I said, the health industry, and every other way that we can not have informed consent, we're just being blinded. So yeah, anyway, I, I was given antibiotics without even knowing what they do, right? And this is the lack of informed consent. So I vowed as a naturopathic doctor to empower people, give you all informed consent, right? Like, like we did with those bars, because now you have the information to make a decision based on that. Are you consenting towards eating those bars with that decision? I don't care if you do. What I care about is that you know and can make a decision based on that. So naturopathic medicine is awesome. I'm an advocate. I'll, I'll go to the highest mountain in Los Angeles and I'll yell it. I'll stand on a soapbox at a dingy bar at 2 a.m. and yell it. It doesn't matter because uh, what we're doing is really amazing. The, the main tenant that we follow is working with nature, right? We know that the body heals itself. And you can't tell me it doesn't because if you, when you were a kid, right, and you're biking and you're racing your friends, you're doing all these jumps, at least that's what I used to do. I busted my knee once, I scraped it up and it was bleeding nonstop. It was, I, thought, I thought my knee was gonna fall off. But, um, but I never really thought about it to that moment. I said, wow, my body's really doing something. You know, a week later I have a scab or, or the beginning of a scab, two weeks later I have a scab. You know, by, by a month it's healed. And even at age nine, I said, what the heck is going on in my body? And, and we have this intelligence that totally oversees balance, right? So working with nature, that's important. We have to work with the body. So what we're doing here on this podcast and show is teaching you how to work with your body, how to approach working with nature, right? Because unfortunately... Medicine has not worked with nature, and here's how. Think about when you have a fever, right? Oh, I feel like crap. Uh, my, my, I'm at 98, I'm at 99, I'm at 100, I have a fever, I'm sweating, my bones hurt, my legs hurt, I can't get out of bed. Is that not a, is that not a mechanism in your body to protect you? There's no coincidence. Why is your body creating a fever? Well, it's doing it for a reason, right? And we know this. So then can someone tell me why we have medicines that bring down our fever? Why do we have anti-fever medicines? If we have a headache from a fever, we go, oh, I, gotta, I gotta take something to lower this fever. And this is the, where we're living. We're living at giving medicines towards 
going against the bodies, going against the bodies, and what what it's trying to do, and he and then heal us, and we're suppressing the body's intelligence. That's that's the way that I'm going to put it. Um, so here's here's the reason why naturopathic medicine's ama- amazing because we work with the body, right? At safe levels, we work with the body to make sure that it's doing what it needs to do. And we do it, we teach others, we do no harm, we prevent disease. How about prevention, right? What about prevention? I mean, the paradigm we live in is now, shoot, I'm sick. What happened to prevention? I'm sick and now treat me to suppress those symptoms of sickness. Instead of going, let's be empowered 10 years, five years, 20, 30 years before even disease arises, let's be empowered, right? Because I feel good, but I'm making sure I'm doing the things to ensure that I have a long, healthy, thriving life. And this is what we should do, right? This is what we need to be doing. Conventional medicine is beautiful, and I'll tell you why. If I get hit by a car walking out of this studio, my leg's falling off, I don't want herbs, I don't want a protein bar, I don't want... um, any other things that are not outside of antibiotics and painkillers, right? And whatever else they need to give me. And there's an awesome place for conventional medicine in that, in that realm or in the realm of some acute, acute diseases. But outside of that, we're, we're living in a world where we're trying to fit everything into that conventional box and conventional medicine is becoming overwhelmed. Because if you have something come up that's preventative, why would you be taking medication? If you can heal it with food, if you can heal it with herbs, if you can heal it with any nutraceuticals, if you can heal it with so many modalities, why are we jumping into medication that's suppressing the body's symptoms and then leaving us with just a pile of just suppressing and suppressing and suppressing until what happens? Boom, we get a disease five, 10 years later naturopathic medicine, please know that we are healing many people. And that functional medicine is following suit, just like naturopathic medicine. It's branched out of naturopathic medicine, but it's the same idea. Functional doctors, naturopathic doctors, we're doing the same thing, right? And we're supporting integratively healthcare. All right. I needed to say that because that's, that's what I am, a naturopathic doctor, and I'm proud of it, and I'm happy to be one. We have choices out there, ladies and gentlemen, we can make choices on our food, we can make choices on our life, but just know that what we're gonna be doing here is giving you those choices so you can make them as knowledgeable and empowered consumers. Doesn't matter if it's food, doesn't matter if it's protein bars, doesn't matter if it's medication, whatever it is, right? We are not just physical bodies, we are not doesn't work that way. We're not machines. We can't take a mechanistic approach. We can't do reductionism in the way we treat things. We're not machines. We are more than that. We are mental, emotional bodies, right? If any doctor ever tells you that our mind does not dictate uh, a lot of our, or majority of our body, just go like this. Hey doc, what's your favorite food? And they might go, hmm, well, you know, I, I like pizza. Pizza might be one of my favorites. Well, tell them to think about pizza. Tell them to think about hot pizza. Tell them to think about pizza coming straight out of the box and tell me that man or woman is not salivating. Our mind and body are intimately connected, so we need to be empowered to know how mentally we can be our best selves, our highest selves, how emotionally we can be our highest selves. How are we relating to the people around us, to ourselves? We need to empower ourselves, not just physically, and that's what we will be doing every show. Guests from all walks of life experts who are walking their path and doing their best. That's what we're bringing in. All right. We're spiritual beings. We're high vibration, emotional beings. So we got to remember that, right? We want to be our best self always. Are we expressing ourselves every single day? What about creatively, right? We're creative beings. We create every day. What are we doing? So I would love for everyone who watches this show to be empowered enough to start doing this with their lives. So before I go, I wanna talk about something very important that we can integrate today or tomorrow, but soon. If I was on a podcast and, and I was a guest and the host goes, hey, Dr. G, if you can do one thing for your health, just one, what would it be? I would answer this way. Before food, before supplements, before anything, I would say the importance 
of your time, me time rituals. Here's why it's important, because from this point, when you develop this part of you, that percolates, percolates, percolates into other things, right? Your, your, your body health, your mental health. What the heck do I mean by rituals or me time? What I mean is this, carving out time in your day to have no phone, to have no people around you, and to be reflective enough that you can integrate things going on in your life from the past, now or into the future, right? And it's so important for our mental, emotional, and physical health to take these time, this time to carve out and reflect, right? So people do it with meditation, sure. People do it with yoga, sure. Gratitude is wonderful. Gratitude is empowering. Gratitude gives you joy for what is there. And that shifts your perspective into a new self, right? Many times we go, and we don't even think about the car that drove us to work. We don't even think about the food that's nourishing our body. We don't even think about the fact that we just woke up and we could smell and see and walk and taste. But when you tap into that vibration of gratitude, that transcends so much and your days, I promise you, will shift. So making sure you are grateful, 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 grateful. Affirm that you're grateful. Affirm what you want and speak confidently, right? Reflect on what's there. Give love to what's there, right? We have two choices every day for everything we do. Love and fear. We can go the love route. We can go the fear route. Everything we say, everything we think, every action we take. So choose love and what you can do. Choose love, right? Look in the mirror and be like, I love this guy. He's all right. I love him. I'm telling you, not some crazy hippie shit. I'm telling you because this is empowering. And anyone and everyone can start doing this tomorrow. Take your me time, carve it out. If you're a single mom and has kids, then do it in your car. Do it, do it when you find time. Do it in the shower. Just find time for yourself. This can empower us to make such powerful changes into our lives. And I want this to be today's take home, all right? Me time, rituals, much love. Next week, we have an incredible guest. Uh, it's going to be Dr. Jess Petros. She is amazing. She's going to be amazing. So I'm so excited to have her on, and we will be here next week coming back at you. Much love, high vibrations to all. Thank you.